Hey everybody and welcome to another video. In this one, I just wanna go ahead and have a short video to talk to you about PSPP. Now on my channel, I have a couple of tutorials. One for uh, PSPP 1.4, which came out uh, a couple of years ago, three years ago maybe now, that particular uh, video series. And I did basic stuff. There's, it's about, I don't know, 10 videos, something like that. And then in uh, 2023, when 1.6 came out, I attempted to do another video series with the update. But on my Intel Mac that I'm on right now, it didn't really work out very well. It was very slow, unoptimized, that kind of thing. So I had to stop that particular video series. But earlier this year, about March... Uh, 2024, a new PSP version came out, version 2, uh, as you can see here. This is the uh, PSPP IRE. This is like the, you know, the the runtime environment, that kind of thing uh, from GNU. You can go download that for both for all Mac, Windows, Linux distributions. It's all good. You can get it through Homebrew or uh, GitHub and all of that kind of stuff. You can download it. And it is a an extremely lightweight. And as you can see, program for the analysis of sampled data. And um, it, now. I'm not going to go through all of the changes of 2.0.1, which is the current version, some bug fixes for the uh, 0.1 right here. Uh, and I have up on the screen here what uh, you see from changes from 1.6.2 to 2.0. Now, again, just uh, the, the one right here is for bug fixes, right? So this is on their news page, savannah.dnu.org slash news. You can take a look at the release notes here. So the release notes, let me make this bigger. Uh, oops, wrong one. There we go. <laughs> there we go. A um, couple of changes. And so I may do a new series for how to work with PSPP. Some of the uh, videos in that series, like how to open files and do all of that, is are, are where the views are for PSPP. And that's, you know, that makes a lot of sense, right? How do I open an SAV file from SPSS? And if you're not familiar, PSPP is so named because it is a replacement for the pro proprietary program SPSS, and they just flip the letters PSPP, right? Which supposedly makes it roll off the tongue like SPSS does. And that's fine. So um, it's a lightweight program. It can do a lot of things. Um, it's maybe a little constrained compared to Jasper Jamovi because they are using R. This uses another engine underneath. Uh, I'm, I would assume it's Python, maybe. I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'm not familiar with like these kinds of libraries, um, lib rsvg2. So maybe um, somebody in the comments can, can correct me on that. And it, so if there is some interest, I will do another series. I expect that maybe later this year, depending on if there is a need. Look out for a community post if you are interested in PSPP um, in asking whether or not that is something that you'd all like to see. So what are the changes here? Well, a few more changes. Again, this is not a massive new features list. So we've got C tables is now implemented. Uh, we have frequencies now honors the layered setting on split files. So if you split a file based on gender or something like that, um, you can now layer your uh, frequencies so you can have two sets of frequencies that aren't overlapping and uh, make sure that honors the categorical descriptives. Uh, in the aggregate function uh, includes CGT, CLT, CIN, and C out. Um, and break variables are now optional. So you don't have to break variables anymore when you are doing the aggregate function. You can add files, match files, and update. Um, or variables, string variables, right? So string variables are words with the same name to have different widths. So you can now change the width of your string variables, even if they have the same name. Crosstabs now calculate significance of Pearson and Spearman correlations, which again was a missing feature when you compare PSPP to SPSS or uh, Jamovi or Jasp if you're using a GUI runtime environment, right? Like a GUI runtime environment. So crosstabs was, was of course doing the chi-square tests, but now it's doing the... Um, values for those Pearson and Spearman correlations. Display macros is now implemented. I'm not sure what that is. Set summary is now implemented and show environment is now implemented. You can remove the modifies. Uh, they removed, excuse me, the modifies variable command or vars, which is not in SPSS. So this is added functionality between the two. Um, building from a Git repository, uh, which required GIMP, now require, requires um, RSVG convert and libs RSVG to instead, which SVG, by the way, is an image file uh, type svg.svg .svg, so that's how uh, images are created and saved the pspp dump sav program is no longer installed by default i'm assuming the dump sav has something to do with SA, uh, spss sav files uh, improve search options in the syntax editor but that's great uh, in case you want to do syntax uh, coding and analysis okay you can now use search uh, localizations they now have an arabic which are i, I do have to um specify here that when they add languages, these are user generated languages translations. So just be aware of that. It might not be complete, but they have Arabic and Tamil now and other translations have been updated that have existed in previous versions. Right. So 
And then journaling is now uh, started interactively in the uh, runtime environment, which is what I've got up. Okay. You can edit options to override the default and then send your bug, bug reports to bug, GNU, PSPP at GNU.org. So that, that's the gist of the um, updates there, right? So nothing too wild. So if I were to open up some data, mm, some recent maybe examples, let's just open up an example. Uh, let's open up the personnel.sav file. Uh, so this is an SPSS file, right? So here we have our first name, last name, sex, DOB, occupation, and salary. And let's see. Ooh, Ahmed Khan, Alfred Green. So it's sorted. It's not sorted by anything. Anyways, um, we can, you know, do a number of things. But honestly, there isn't much that under the hood that we need to change, right? So I can delete rows, I can add cases and things like that. Whether or not, let's go to analyze and let's do, ooh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not optimized. Yeah, that's a bummer. It's not really all that optimized for Intel Max because it is struggling right now. It is struggling right now to add the, well, it added the row, but now it's struggling to delete the row and um, it's now stuck. It's unfortunately now stuck. Mm. <laughs> so if we look up a, uh, one of these files, I opened up the personnel.sav and we take a look, you know, we've got uh, 56, right? And if we choose analyze, well, there's your cross tabs. Um, so if I do a cross tab here um, that I already calculated, um, uh, nope, that's the other one. Let's do it this way then. You get, I just did a random uh, sex by salary, which isn't great because then you get this massive table. So don't do that. Um, but as you can see here, we've got the Pearson chi squared and here is the, uh, here is the p-value, right, as what they call the asymptotic significance value two-tailed, and there you go. It also includes the likelihood, linear by linear association, and number of valid cases, because we have a total of 56, but two are missing. So that's what I mean by, um, that's what I mean by cross tabs, and we can do some other things here. We can compare means, or we could do a bivariate correlation. Uh, let's do a, well, I don't want to do a bivariate correlation on that. Uh, yeah, let's do frequencies. How about that? Ooh, actually, maybe. Let's data split file. And if we get split file, um, organize output by group, let me do that. And then we hit OK, and it's going to sort it for us. And we go back here. If you're interested in what that is, that is alt tab for Max. If you're curious, it has um, by window and by app. Uh, so there we go. So we split file by sex. OK, so let's do a quick um, frequencies and let's get occupation in here and uh, it's going to do a number of things uh, by default mean standard deviation minimum maximum then we can do all of these other things right um, but let's go to frequency tables because that's what we're going to be using it opened up the window on my other monitor um, so we've got display frequency tables always um, so these are our options for frequency tables so always show them okay good that's what we want to do um, we can also get charts again it opened up a tiny little window on my other monitor so we can do uh, let's do a histogram and let's superimpose a normal curve and then we can do bar charts and pie charts but let's do that and let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so we've got artist, baker, we've got cook here, split by sex, uh, sex is male, and then down here we have female, and it did not draw in, it did not draw in the chart. Uh, interesting. Maybe because, no, it should have drawn in the chart. We've got frequency values here. Yeah, it should have drawn in that chart. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, so anyways, PSPP might still be a little buggy on Macs. I don't know what the experience is on Windows. But here we go. We have artist, baker, carpenter, cleaner, cook, manager, artist, baker, barrister. This is a US, UK kind of stuff rather than uh, US because barristers are lawyers here, attorneys, right? Um, and so you can see the difference. And then we could, you know, we could do a, a gender by, a gender by profession cross tabs or chi squared test. You know, one of the, we could do all of that. So those are the changes in PSPP. Um, if you have a, a question, comment, or other feedback, please leave those down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.